Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be designing a random creature by putting a bunch of animals together and this time I want to choose three animals and I'm going to use this website that's a random animal generator and I'm going to click refresh. And okay, so I have these six options here and I'm going to take a D6, uh, this one. I'm going to roll it three times and those will be the three animals that I get and if I get a duplicate I'll just re-roll. Okay, I got a six, which is a coyote, a two, which is an aardvark, and a three, which is a hare. I was hoping I would get crocodile or whale, but we can work with this. Coyote, aardvark, and hare. They're all pretty similar animals, but we have to go with this. Now I want to generate some random colors, and that's going to guide what I actually make the uh, animal, what color I make the animal. Okay, so I'm gonna clear that, and I'm going to generate, I think, three main colors. So one, two, three. I actually like that. Do I want a fourth? Then I have to use it. Let's put a fourth one. Okay, yeah, I actually like that. Take a screenshot, and you can actually see the color codes if you wanna uh, use these colors yourself. So I think this is gonna be interesting. So I'm just gonna sketch a bunch of, um, let's start with coyote. So that was the first one I got, and I'm just gonna get familiar with the way it looks by just sketching some loose stuff from reference. I'm using an 8B pencil. Uh, Dina Norland actually recommends this pencil all the time, and I wanted to try it, and I just forgot how much I loved soft lead. Like, I knew I liked soft lead, but I've never really used an 8B pencil that much. I always use like 2B or 4B, but 8B is really fun. Uh, I like it for sketching personally, but people use it for line art, and that's just a really nice tool. And this does not look like a coyote. I see them around my neighborhood sometimes, I always think it's a stray dog because they just look like really scraggly, um, and they look like dogs. Haven't really drawn today yet, so, well I have, but not a lot. That does not look very accurate, but I will try again. Start with some more guideline shapes so I actually get this right. Their faces are very much like wolves and foxes, sort of. I keep giving it too much space between the nose and the top of the, like, jowls, I guess. I don't know why I can't draw their faces very well. I'll try drawing one that's um, from a different angle. I think that would be helpful. I find that a little bit easier than the straight on head view. It can be really challenging. This one looks so sad. I think I keep making the snout too short. Okay, and I'm gonna draw the hair. It's kind of wonky, but that's a rabbit. I also want to try drawing this angle when it's like. And I just need to try drawing some artifacts, which I've never really drawn before. Here's one. They're quite I have quite interesting anatomy that I really like. They're really cute. I never appreciated artifacts before. And the coyote is on the other page, but oh, I have to somehow combine these together. What should I do? Maybe something... 
Maybe something with like long pointy ears because it's like the, did I say wolf? It's the coyote mixed with the bunny. So it's like long pointy ears. Um, and the eyes could be on the sides of the face like the bunny. Well, it's kind of like that anyway, but it can be like an oval shaped face. Maybe like a dog snout. It's a start, it's a start. Okay, what if it was something more... I'm gonna basically go through a bunch of different stages and just see how I can evolve it. Okay, so the ears have this like little connecting piece on the uh, anteater. Well, I guess all ears are kind of like that, but I want to emphasize that. Maybe the long nose, but it's like a more of like a dog nose. That is terrifying. I don't like that. I really, that creeps me out. I think I like this head more, but I will change it a little bit. I think parts of it should just be skin. Um, maybe it's feet. I think this is getting closer to something. So maybe scrunch it up a bit more. The legs are kind of long, so maybe... I'm just looking at this one silhouette of it walking. And very, like, fluffy legs. I'm just gonna end up looking like a fox. The legs are actually kind of short. I thought they were long for some reason, but they're not. Kind of the fluffy chest of the... Um, coyote? And rabbit feet, I think, would be a good addition. So I'm kind of keeping like the round posture of the aardvark, the bunny feet, ears, sort of the oval head, um, the longer aardvark nose, and like the fluff for the uh, coyote, um, and the pointier ears for the coyote also. And um, do bunnies have claws? They probably do, but I might give it also claws. Um, because coyotes have them. <laughs> so rabbits, well, coyotes are pretty fluffy. I think it's cute to kind of like combine them like this. I feel like it needs like scales or skin somewhere. Like maybe the legs will be made out of, not really skin, that's not really the word I'm looking for. So I think I'm gonna lean towards this and this one. I'm gonna take a picture. Oh man, but I kind of like this one, but none of them are long. So that wouldn't really make sense. So I'm going to sketch on this side the final one and use the colors that I uh, picked. But before I get on with the sketching, I just wanna say this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. There's more than 25,000 classes in illustration, graphic design, um, all kinds of art stuff that you are interested in. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the classes you can join in and learn as much as you want. Skillshare is a perfect place to help you continue to learn things that can be useful in your business, career. I found a video that's relevant to this video, which is designing characters and specifically animal characters, which is character design crash course designing animal characters. And this class is by Melissa Lee. And I think it's always good to hear other people's perspectives on how to design things because you might pick up little tips here and there that you've never thought of before. Skillshare is also pretty affordable. The annual subscription is less than $10 per month. There's more than 7 million people on Skillshare right now and if you want to join them, the first 500 people to use the link in my description will get a two month free trial to Skillshare. So thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, it helps me a lot and onto the actual final illustration. So I kind of like the pose where it's curving around like this. Basic guidelines. I'm gonna restart the sketch on this side. And the aardvark's legs are kind of fluffy near the top, so I kind of want to emulate that.
I want to make parts of it have thinner fur, more of a skin-like appearance. I'm like feeling very heavy-handed right now. I think I'm just trying to get it done. I want to avoid this tangent here. So I'm going to make the body come in a bit more so that this ear is clearly overlapping the body. I'm really feeling like this could be a very line art heavy piece, which I think would be a lot of fun because sometimes doing really intricate stuff is fun. I also kind of want to do markings, but I don't know what. But I'm going to start outlining it. I'm going to use a ballpoint pen because I had success with that the other day and I think that would be fun to use. Sometimes I find drawing fur, like, kinda, uh, like, I have to really restrain myself and not just start mindlessly adding tufts. So I'm gonna use some gouache to fix it up, um, paint it. I'm just gonna use gouache for the whole thing. And you can see I kind of panically started to try to fix the pose a little bit here. I used the Windsor Newton designer squash, but I also like the Holbein gouache as well. Uh, I like them both equally. I like the Holbein mixing set the best, and I actually have some coming in the mail, which is really exciting because I love it, and it, it's been out of stock in tons of places, but Jackson's Art Supplies still sold it, so I was really excited to find that. It's weird because this doesn't really feel like my style, but I hope by painting it, uh, maybe it'll look more like something I'd do. So if you don't mix white into your gouache, um, it can be a lot more like watercolor. I want the ears to be that purpley. Oh, whoops, that silhouette white on it. This is pretty close to that purple. I like to think about contrasting areas when I'm painting Things. So it, you want some areas to have like a pop of dark, some areas to be lighter. I wanted the sort of front part of the face to remain a light color. It's funny how it ended up being just very long. <laughs> Trying to add a little darker patterns on the side of this. I 
I also want darker ears. I thought I would try to outline this part with a darker color as well because the darker, well this dark purple gives a nice contrast to areas that need it. I think the face needs more light. Trying to find a balance between the darks and lights and not let parts blend in, but also not overdo it with the darks. The thing with gouache is there's, there's a lot of pushing and pulling. Because you can paint over anything and you can just keep changing it and maybe ruin it by accident because you can just like really keep working it for such a long time. I'm using the colors that I chose, but I'm also like deviating away from them a little bit um, to make the illustration work. But I kind of use it as like inspiration and the basis of what I was going to build it off of. So it's kind of like a yellow and purple with a brighter purple and a darker purple and two kind of like one really dark like this one and then sort of a mid-tone, which I should have made duller. I might actually go in and change that. Cause I think it could look nice. This is this just looks like a Pokemon to me for some reason. This is kind of more like the color, so I might make the front get lighter. Actually, I just need it to be lighter. Make the front of it. I think I'm, it'll be a her. I don't know what the name should be though. Let me know what you think, because I'm really bad at naming, and a lot of you are so creative at coming up with names. It's awesome. I've also been thinking of live streaming. Um, probably not to a set schedule, but just to start doing it. Because it's something I've always wanted to experiment with. I've done it before, but not um, like seriously. Like I've never done a really long live stream, and I've got a webcam coming in the mail and I just think it'll be fun. I love the varying detail you can get with paintbrushes like it can really change and get thick and thin. Um, you can really get varied marks with it which I think is a lot of fun and can make things look cool. This part needs some more color because I saw it from a distance and it was just not it just looked kind of confusing. Sometimes it just doesn't really look like my style I think because I'm trying too hard make it look a certain way and then it just starts to not look like it. But I think this one kind of does. What do you think? Does this look like my style? I can't even tell. So before I ruin it, I think I need to call this done. It's not exactly what I was expecting to do. Uh, I think the colors are a little bit too the same all the way through, but I did have fun with it. I like the way the face turned out. The anatomy is questionable, but I had fun trying to combine these animals together. It always ends up kind of not looking like the sketches I was doing, but it was a lot of fun to paint with gouache. Um, I've been missing that as I've been saying a lot in my videos. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one.